Hey guys, welcome back to Carbon Scoring, the best place for action figures and comics history. If you're new to the channel, welcome on board. If this is your 12th mystery box, yes, I can't believe it, but this is our 12th mystery box that we're doing. Here's how it goes. This is a box full of toys, one that I haven't looked through in a while. We're going to crack it open and go through and see what's inside. Truthfully, I kind of have a sense of what's inside of this. These are Spider-Man movie figures, and I think it's pretty heavily dominant with some of the early Toy Biz movie figures from the Sam Raimi films. But let's go ahead and crack it open and see what we've got inside. Yep, look at that. Oh, this is going to be so much fun. Okay, so... First, let's just grab the very best figure of all. So right off of the bat, this is, I can't stress the historical importance of this action figure enough. So this is the superposable Spider-Man from the very first Sam Raimi Spider-Man film that came out in May of 2002. And let's put this thing into context. So there were Spider-Man classics figures, those very first ones that were the kind of comic accurate super articulated figures, but Marvel Legends, they came out the same year, but I'm pretty sure they were not out when this figure was released. So just look at the love, look at the detail that went into this figure. So you are, all right, let's say you're me. Let's say you're the hugest Spider-Man fan ever, and you see this on the pegs. You have been waiting your whole life for a movie accurate representation of Spider-Man. These colors are really great. Granted, it takes some liberties from the costume, but it works. I mean, it's uh, it's certainly more comic accurate than the X-Men figures that we've seen. You know, the X-Men movie had come out before this and sort of made it financially viable to do superhero films. But then just look at the level of articulation that this figure has. I mean, it has got ankle, toe, wrist. Uh, I mean, this is just, as a matter of fact, this was the premier Spider-Man figure in my collection for a number of years. Even though it wasn't comic accurate, I still kept it right at the front. So now let's pretend you're just a kid and you've never, you just don't know Spider-Man and you see this absolutely gorgeous figure on the shelves. And fun fact, back in 2002, you could actually buy toys at the store. They were actually on shelves. That's uh, fairly unusual these days with distribution and whatnot. But this figure came with this gorgeous, like, uh, gargoyle piece off of, like, a building. Just fantastic. I, you know, this is one of the finest figures that Toy Biz ever did. And just such a, such a hugely important figure. So we'll, we're going to give that the love that it fully deserves. Uh, same line, uh, same kind of time frame. Here is the battle damaged. Obviously, it's on the same body and frame, but, you know, completely new sculpts. Every single one of these parts has new sculpting to it. Uh, maybe not the the boots, but everything else just really, you know, beat up, ravaged, fine details. Even look at the paint where there's, like, blood spatter in the cut marks. And that is still, that's a pretty accurate Tobey Maguire head. I mean, look at how the eyepiece is shattered on that. Gosh, that's nicely done. All right. So now we're moving into, this is an Andrew Garfield Spider-Man figure. Again, nice. I always love the spiders on the back, how they how they incorporate that design. Really tried to match it with the spider on the front. So these were, in my humble opinion, the worst of the Spider-Man movies, the two amazing Spider-Man films. But they came with the most comic accurate figure. So I believe this is from Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man 2. The colors are absolutely comic colors. We, we went through a bunch of different uh, eyelets for Spider-Man. These were certainly the most comic accurate ones with white eyelets. Good figure. Good solid Hasbro figure. Nice articulation. Good figure. Uh, okay. Oh, so there's going to be... Okay. So for the third Spider-Man movie, they did some smaller scale figures. I imagine there'll be a few of these in here. This is Venom from that film. Oh, wow. Okay. This is so good. So, obviously, the very first Spider-Man movie actually went through and told the origin of Spider-Man. And that included uh, Peter's very selfish act of trying to use his newfound abilities to make some money. And so, this is the wrestler Spider-Man figure. And it actually, these rubber parts, you know, you can convert him into 
uh, full on Spider Man. He comes with extra arms so that you can switch it. But I think I have every every one that I have of this. I've got in the the rubbery uh, plastic that goes over the top. Uh, just great, great stuff, and really kind of you know sort of showcases the origin of where Spidey's future costume would end up coming from from this homemade suit right here. Ooh, that's good. Uh, let's pick another great one. Holy cow! You want to talk about the most perfect casting of all time? So perfect that they've brought him back in the newer movies. So this is uh, J.K. Simons, the the brilliant actor playing J. Jonah Jameson the role that he was clearly born to play. And again, I've got to point out, this is before the facial recognition software and sculpting came into effect. This is where some dude with a piece of clay carved out the most completely perfect, I mean, look at the, the just the sneer on his face. Oh, that is so good. And, you know, they gave us, you know, okay, he, does, he has a little action fe feature too. Um, but I mean, how great was it that in this first movie they gave us figures of, of regular people to set up with our movie displays. Terrific. Okay, here is Spider-Man 3. So this is the six, so they did do a six inch series of figures for Spider-Man 3. Um, this is Venom. This is uh, that 70s Venom with uh, Topher, what's his name, playing Venom. Maybe, maybe not the greatest casting. Maybe part of the reason why that movie didn't do quite as good. Still a pretty solid figure though. Uh, okay, here's a couple Goblin Glider parts. So, I mean, this is an accessory, right? This is the stuff that came with the figure. Look at the level of detail and sculpting on this. That's like where a little pumpkin bomb comes out of. You can actually see the sculpting of the pumpkin bomb in there. Even the bottom of these pieces are great. I mean, just, and it, they connect with this. Just incredible Green, green Goblin stuff. Now, I'm always a sucker for a split Spidey costume. I probably would have preferred if the mask was like half and half too, but again, Spidey 3, not quite as articulated, doesn't have quite the level of detail with, with this line, but still very nice. Now, let's grab the big boy. Yep, so for Spider-Man 3, they actually did a line of figures that came with a Build-A-Figure, and this was this was the Build-A-Figure Sandman. It It is theoretically articulated, although, Good luck, uh, good luck getting it to do much other than how it's posed to do. So this is kind of a, a glorified sculpture, but what a sculpture it is. I mean, Thomas Hayden Church, really, really perfect. He's got kind of some, some scratchy sand stuff on him, sculpted all the way around. Looks like somebody's blown a hole through him. That's pretty cool. I'll take it. Um, oh, so this is obviously Amazing Spider-Man 2. Same figure as what we saw before, but I believe this is the Diamond Select version. Let me grab that other one. Yeah, so you can see there's a scale difference. So uh, this is really nice. This is a really clean figure. Look at how good that web line is. And that's raised. That's raised web line painted really nicely. Great, great classic head. Got the, the movie suit on the back. That's a, you know, if you just, if you don't know what it is, and you're just looking for a really good Spider-Man figure, that's... There it is. That's a good one. Ah, uh, Tom Holland. So this is a Spider-Man Homecoming figure. It, it, it's so funny. I think about this all the time. These, the, the Tom Holland movies, Spider-Man Homecoming, Spider-Man Far From Home, uh, Spider-Man No Way Home, they are the farthest storyline from the original books. Obviously, the Sam Raimi ones, and even to a, a lesser extent, the two Amazing Spider-Man movies, were really, really faithful to the comic storyline, whereas these just go just in a completely different direction. Obviously, it's tied in with the MCU, but at the same time, I think these movies are the most true to the character of Peter Parker, and I think that's why they work. That even though you know he has this like crazy tech suit that Iron Man gave him, and and all of this stuff, and and maybe his supporting cast is a little bit different, the characterization of Peter is so perfect. And Tom Holland is so perfect at it that they're different, but they're more the same than, than anything else. Oh, wow. This is an action figure. This is this was, I think, like a $6, $7 action figure. Again, Kirsten Dunst in the first Spider-Man movie with this beautiful, like, 
kind of Asian patterned dress. Look at the paint apps on this thing. I mean, that is just absolutely lovely and was available for, you know, five bucks, six bucks at Walmart. So nicely done. Yeah, eh. I don't know, man. I, <clears throat> you know, it, it's cool. I mean, I, I get that you got to kind of make some changes and that Electro, Electro's classic costume, his classic Steve Ditko costume, would probably not translate to film very well. I think that that is an understatement and I will, I will admit to that. But this just never kind of worked for me. I don't know. Tell you what did work for me, this. Holy cow. Holy cow. That Tobey Maguire, you know, with the backpack, he's, I mean, you know, that's Peter Parker, y'all. I mean, that just, just, that just sums everything up. Now, granted, he's a little bit pre-posed. You know, these hips definitely don't give you a lot of choices, these arms and whatnot. The, that one's ball jointed, that one's not. But it's still, it's just such a good figure. Such a good figure. Uh, this is uh, the this is the smaller scale line. Still a good facial likeness. A little bit more simple. I mean, this was this was obviously meant to be a toy for children, which is what all of these are supposed to be. So definitely my favorite of the Spider-Man movies, the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies, was the second one, and almost all of that is because of the incredible portrayal of Doctor Octopus that Alfred Molina did. He he made the villain interesting. He made him. Not so much sympathetic, I guess a little sympathetic, but more understandable, more relatable. You understood what his motivations were. And I think that's one of the reasons why the Marvel movies are so much better than the DC movies is you get the bad guys. Like, you can totally understand why the bad guys do what they do. And and certainly that was true for Alfred Molina in Spider-Man 2 as Dr. Octopus. Great figure. Um... I, this is probably the third Spider-Man movie. His, the blue of his suit got darker as the movies went on. Definitely still a, a Sam Raimi movie. Definitely still a Toy Biz figure. Built off of that same body. Uh, they've added a little bit of the bice. Uh-oh, look what I found. Magnets. Oh, nice. I do love a Spidey with magnets. Let's, let's check his feet. Magnets. Yeah. Might have to pull this out and stick this on their fridge. Oh, I love a magnetic Spidey. Great. Uh, so, uh, Infinity something. Was this from Infinity War? I think so. I think this is Spidey Goes to Space to fight Thanos. And Mr. Stark, I'm not feeling well. Oh, God. I, I, I've i watched that scene 50 times, and it still kills me every single time. Marvel Select. So, not, not a Marvel Legend. This is a Marvel Select. This is the uh, comic shop exclusive Diamond series. And you, call, you pay more, and these figures are, well... You pay more now. Of course, you know, Marvel Legends have unfortunately had to go up in price, but this was more of a $20 figure when other figures were in the probably $14 range. But pretty good looking version of Andrew Garfield. Definitely a really nice suit. I kind of like that you get to see his mechanical web shooters. Remember, that was one of the controversies of the Sam Raimi films was that Peter had organic web shooters. And so they brought back the mechanical web shooters for the subsequent movies. And you get a good look at those right there. Uh, this is that maybe Spider-Man 2, Spider-Man 3 doesn't have the magnets. Again, superposable Spider-Man. This one's definitely from Spider-Man 3. He's got the, you can almost kind of tell just by sort of the, the makeup of it, a raised spider on the back. This was down in my old secret lounge where we had some water damage and that's, uh, ugh, that's mold on the figure. So we're going to kind of quickly move on with that before, before one of us gets aspergillosis. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Um... Green Goblin, Harry Osborn, Green Goblin. So, Spider-Man 3 figure, again, from that six-inch line. I definitely don't want to fight a guy with spiky things like Batman on his arms. Pretty good, James Franco. Um, I really like Spider-Man. I'm not sure if that, if y'all dialed into that, that I will pretty much buy multiples of just about any Spider-Man figure. I think the difference with this one is the butterfly joints at his shoulders. I'm sure he came with some different accessories. I'm not the hugest fan of trying to keep up with all the accessories. Obviously, we're on 12 mystery boxes. I've got a real problem here. Keeping up with the accessories and the packaging just kind of compounds all of that. Three inch, or not three inch, but smaller scale. I think these are closer to like five inch. Cool toy. Okay, this is the, the first Amazing Spider-Man movie. So, 
I don't know if he's got, you know, sort of slicky Air Jordans there. A, a bit more of a change to the costume. Don't love the gold eyes. Even though it's not that bad, it's kind of cool looking, but it, it just doesn't look like Spider-Man. And when you compare it to, you know, what they were able to do, the second go round clearly went way more classic than the first go around with that. These are always cool. I'm, I'm always a sucker for a Spidey body Peter head. That's pretty much the exact same sculpt that we saw in the Peter Parker figure. Again, kind of has these pre-posable, you know, V-joint uh, uh, hips. And I think he's, there's probably some kind of action feature. This is, uh, we'll call this a uh, punching bag, Peter. Uh, oh, nice. You know, smaller scale again, but this is from uh, Spider-Man 3. A little bit, little bit of a smaller figure. Yeah, here we go. So Diamond Select, man, they really did do a nice job with their Spider-Man figure. So Spider-Man Homecoming. So let's see if we can, if I can reach back down. So here's the Hasbro uh, Spider-Man Homecoming figure. Great figure. Absolutely love it. You can see really nice head sculpt. He's got some of the texture. Hopefully you can pick up some of the texture of the costume. It's not just smooth plastic. It is textured. But then this one takes it to an, another level. You see how the web lines are actually split. So they're not solid lines like you see on the six inch figure. On this seven inch figure, you actually get the splitting of the web lines, which is what it was more accurate. That's what it looked like in the movie. Uh, he's got the cool little electronic spider on his chest. They still have kind of those wonky hips, but I'll forgive that for such intricate sculpting. Yeah, both of them have cool spidey on the back. God, man, this thing is nice. I, ooh, I don't know that I appreciated how good this figure is. That is a really, really good figure. Oh, here's the trick here. You can take the mask off. I'm not going to because this mask is so old, it'll probably dissolve in my hands, that rubbery plastic, but there is a Tobey Maguire underneath. Uh, this was a, a Marvel Unlimited line. I think it was like an eight inch figure line. I've actually got the, the red suit and the black suit comic versions down in the secret lounge, but this was a, uh, a movie version. Looks like it probably came out around the time of Spider-Man 3 based on sort of the silver etchings on the on the web lines there. Another, oh, this is I think the same figure except with Spidey's head, not with Peter's head. Probably Spider-Man 2. Uh, again, interesting, no chest articulation, no ball jointed hips. So I imagine there was some kind of play feature that was involved in that, but also just another way to sell it. Well, I guess the good news is I love this figure so much that I bought two of them and clearly ripped this one just straight out of the bubble. Didn't even bother to take the uh, take the twist ties off. Awesome. Yeah, Spidey Homecoming. So two different heads. Where'd he go? See if we can pull him back up. Nope. Anyway, it came with two heads. I, I'm much more of a fan of this one. This is a closer to Ramita Ditko eyes. Love it. Okay, here we go. See, these are the ones that I, I truly love. I mean, this is the last temptation of the Green Goblin. That is so Willem Dafoe. I mean, look at the carved out cheeks, just like the actor. And they're not symmetrical. Like, it, it, it truly is like a beautifully done, hand sculpted figure. You know, cool dude just kind of wearing a, a blue shirt. Pretty much looks like me going to work every day, only a lot thinner. And I, I mean, I just, and they gave us this. They, they gave us a Norman Osborn figure in that first Spider-Man movie. So good. So here's some three inch, three inch figures from Spidey 3. Uh, again, I'll buy anything. Just put it out there. I'll buy it. Ugh. Yeah, that's, that's bad mold damage. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Holy cow. Look at how good that is. Now, this figure took a bunch of heat, or this character design took a bunch of heat for being, you know, a mighty Morphin Power Ranger, you know, and looking kind of like that. And okay, I get it. But it worked. When you're watching the movie, that's not what you're thinking. When you're watching the movie, you're thinking, oh my gosh, the Green Goblin is going to kill Spider-Man. He's going to kill Mary Jane. But this figure, 
Let's go double bonus. Yep. Look at that. And that is not the same head sculpt. Not the same. So he's got his hair slicked back so that he can wear his Green Goblin mask. Oh, that's so good. Look at how good that is. Thank you, Toy Biz. Oh, yeah, no. Uh, I don't know if I'm Kirsten Dunst. I'm not sure that I'm claiming that one. This is this is just kind of a simple toy, uh, which is okay. You know, that's a, but that's not a Marvel Legend. That's more of just a, a, a simpler one. Another Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man. Spider-Man 3. Another Spidey 3 smaller figure. So yeah, here's here's one. So this has got... I, I'm a, I am a sucker for some of these play features. So it's got the web shooting out. It's on a retractable line, so it comes flying back. And then over here, I guess he has some kind of uh, shooter device thing. Not bad. Not too bad. You know, another, another Tobey Maguire. This one has a little bit better hips to it. Another Spider-Man. Oh, and then we've got some super cute mini mates sitting in here. But hey, I don't know why this is in this box, but we do have a tiny little bobblehead of Hobgoblin. So there you go, guys. There's some Spider-Man movie figures, some truly, truly spectacular figures in here. I'm gonna actually go with this one as probably being my favorite just because of the level of sculpting and detail and paint application that went into this Diamond Select Spider-Man Homecoming figure. So hope you enjoyed it. Watch my other mystery box videos. Uh, watch all the other videos on carbon scoring. It is uh, the place where we come together to laugh, to love comics, to love action figures. And hopefully you guys will hit subscribe and join us for our next video. See you soon.